Yolanda Renee King, she is the granddaughter of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. She is an eighth grader and already a powerful voice for her generation. Yolanda, you have a powerful op-ed out in the Washington Post entitled, My Generation Has to Stand Up Against Gun Violence. In it, you write in part this. I never met my grandfather, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., because he was taken away from my family by gun violence. I know it is my duty as an American to use the platform given to me by my grandparents' sacrifices to uplift the voices of my peers. It is my duty to speak up as a child who lost both her grandfather and great-grandmother to gun violence. For too long, voices like mine have gone ignored. Maybe it's hard for politicians in Washington to imagine the impact these shootings have on students because it doesn't impact them directly. It seems like every month my parents and I talk about a new piece of legislation that gains traction and media coverage but ultimately fails. I do not want to walk into school afraid anymore. I want to be a teenager. I have read a lot of my grandfather's sermons and speeches and there is one that comes to mind in the wake of this tragedy. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. That is our call to action. Yolanda, thank you for those really inspiring words. Um, obviously, you just outlined in the piece your family connection to, to gun violence and the, the tragedies created by it. But talk to us about being a teenager, about being a student, about the fear that you and your peers have, and why you think your generation's voices are so important uh, to get guns out of the hands of people who will do terrible things like shoot up schools. <clears throat> you know, Ever since kindergarten, and we stopped around middle school, I've been doing um, school shooting drills where we hide under furniture and we hide under desks. And the um, teachers explain to us why we are doing this. And it's scary that we still we live in a society where we have to practice uh, just in case a school shooter <clears throat> comes to our school and starts shooting up children. And I think that the other generations have <clears throat> have failed us. They've failed to ban, um, ban these weapons that are harmful and hurtful. Um, and so I feel like it's the job of our generation to do so because the other generations um, did not do so. And so I think it's so important that our voices are heard so that the generations before us are not struggling with these same issues. And so that the generate, or not before us, after us, excuse me, so that the generations after us can be safe and can go to school without feeling that anxiety and feeling that anxiety of maybe not coming back and being scared and they can be kids. And so I think it's so important that our voices are heard because really it seems we are the last hope. We are, we are the last because all the other generations have seemed to failed us and that is the reason why we were having all these shootings because the generations before us did not protect us and so mm -hmm. i along with many other people want to make sure that is not the case for generations before us yolanda after us, I, I, sorry. yolanda al shopton you call me uncle al then let me ask you this you you marched and, and rallied around this issue this it's not just with the last wave. You spoke at March for Our Lives. You uh, spoke at many of the rallies that your father and mother and I put together. Uh, but you always tried to say you wanted to talk to your generation. We grew up in a generation that was shadowed, uh, in many ways overshadowed, by your grandfather. And uh, when I was your age, uh, your grandfather was my hero. I joined the movement at 12. But young people today are more influenced by video games. They're influenced by a lot of music that uh, in many ways praise violence and makes it uh, uh, something that is acceptable, if not trendy. Uh, so how do you, as a 14-year-old who recently turned 14, I know, uh, how do you and other activists your age that you are inspiring, how do you uh, uh, be counterculture 
in your generation to say, wait a minute, there's nothing uh, to be glorified about violence. There's nothing trendy or chic about violence. How do you talk to teenagers your age? Because the shooter in Buffalo, the shooter in uh, uh, in uh, Texas were 18 years old. We're talking about teenagers. So in many ways, you're right. Our generations have not uh, been able to do the legislation, but your generation are bringing about mass killers, and we need the Yolanda Kings to be able to get the generation that you're in to say, wait a minute, this is not the way. How do you do that? <clears throat> well, I think it all starts with education. I think the reasons um, why these young people have these ideas in their mind is because generations before it's something that had been passed on to them and so generations before them encouraged that and so therefore they grow up thinking that it's okay and they end up um as young as 18 starting to um go and think that it's okay to shoot people and so I think that therefore the best thing to do first is that we need to educate people. We need to educate kids as young as possible um, about um, importance. And although you would think it's common sense for someone to not go to a school or not go to a grocery store and shoot some um, and shoot people or to target people because of their race. Um, for some people, clearly it's not because look at all the shootings we're having. So we need to make sure that as um, because children are um, still in the <clears throat> are in the phase where their brains and are developing and they're developing ideas. And so we need to make sure that we educate them as young as possible that violence is not right and that violence is not good. And so I think it's a matter of education. And so I have a lot of these conversations with friends and I try not to surround myself by people who um, who are um, who believe in violence. Um, and usually most, so most of my friends um, usually typically don't play the violent video games or don't really believe in violence. And I noticed that a lot of the people who I know, even though they think that it's like a trend to play violent video games, um, they think that it's like concerning that someone is going into a school and shooting people. So at the same time, there's <clears throat> still that line of common sense. But we need to make sure for those who who do not know that it's um, that it's unacceptable to do such awful thing to do those um, awful things to people. We need to make sure that they are educated. And so I think that we need to really put this into our education system so that we can educate young kids about this because this is an important issue that we need to talk more about. Yolanda Renee King, we know you have to get to school, but we really appreciate you joining us this morning. Your new piece for the Washington Post titled, My Generation Has to Stand Up Against Gun Violence. Thank you again for being with us today.